Hello, everybody, and welcome today for another very special interview. I'm very uh, privileged to be here with the cast and the director of the new film, Slashback, which made its world premiere this year at South by Southwest Film Festival 2022. I am here with the director, Nala, and two of the cast members, uh, Nala Jost and Tashiana, two of the cast members, two of the stars, should I say, and two folks that you probably want to keep on your radar here. Uh, but I'm so excited to talk to everybody today. And how's everyone doing? Great, thanks. Amazing. Awesome. I'm doing good. Awesome, awesome. Hey, loosen up. This is a big thing. You all are having your world premiere at South by Southwest, one of the biggest film festivals in the world. And this is your project making this is 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 world premiere and everybody's going to see it and everybody will love it. I got to start off with you, Nala. You had a tremendous responsibility here. First of all, you know, getting this film done. I I believe you started filming this back in 2019. Then the plague happened, so I could just imagine how many challenges you've had with that. But you got it done. But not only just that, as you know, as a job as a director. But you gave this young cast the platform and, and, and put them in the right position to truly shine. And I could not believe that this may have been some of your cast members' first film ever. It, it's, it has to be magic of some sorts, but you did it, you pulled it off. And I just wanted you to uh, start off with you with just saying, you know, what did you do in order to really, um, you know, train or, or, or provide, um, the tools for your cast to shine in the way they did. Thank you so much. Um, it was such a pleasure to work with Cassiana and Knowledge Us and all the rest of the cast on this project. It was, a, uh, you know, it's, we've been working together for a really long time. Um, and for some of the cast, I, they were part of the development process. I had this idea to make a, a kids alien invasion movie in the Arctic and shot a proof of concept and Knowledge Joss acted in it. She was actually cast in the, the role that Frankie would eventually take as, as the young, um, the sister who, who is taken um, in, in our proof of concept, <laughs> taken by the aliens um, or, or having to sacrifice herself for the aliens and uh, it was, um, so yeah, that was a really fun process to develop this proof of concept and, and Chelsea and Alexis were also a part of that. And so that's a, and we, once we had that kind of proof of concept, then we were able to, to try and find the rest of our, our producing partners and, and Brian Cavan, the, the, my co-writer on this project who worked with us further, um, it was, it was a really kind of special, special process. And, and then once we found Tessiana, it was like, it was very magical and we were able to kind of, um, figure out, uh, and actually knowledge us was, it was, um, I was really, really concerned that, um, she might not be the right age to be in the project anymore. Cause like I said, she was cast as the younger the younger sister. And so I thought when I, when I went back to go and film the movie, I saw knowledge us and she looked very different than she had um, the summer before. She no longer looked like a little kid uh, that could, could, you know, be taken by aliens. Um, so it was, and she looked too, in fact, too close to what the um, in age to the other teenagers. And so I was like, um, thought that she might not be able to, to be a part of the cast. And even though I, I, I remember seeing her when she was maybe three years old and being like that is a that is a cute kid <laughs> and she, she maybe she I could cast her in something one day so it was just one of these things that was really um it, it was a pickle to kind of figure out and then once we found Tassiana it was actually it kind of solved all of our problems because then it was like okay Tassiana can play this I think the knowledge us might just be able to not only be um, old enough to take on the character of Uki, but like talented enough to handle one of the, the most difficult acting roles in, in the film. That's remarkable. That sounds like a huge responsibility <laughs> and 
you two ladies did a fantastic job. I can't say it enough. I was so thoroughly surprised when looking down um, your IMDb credits. I was like, oh, oh, this this is this is your first time. It, this is your your first feature length film. This is this is definitely a strong step forward. You you two are absolutely going to be stars if this is any indication of where your career is going. Um, but for you two, how have, have, have you been taking this all in now? You know, filmmaking is a very, it's, a, it's an interesting career path. And, you know, 2019, when you were on set to now it's 2022, I'm pretty sure somewhere in between that, you might've lost a little bit of hope and faith that where's our movie at, where are we going to see it? But now it's here. So have you two taken it all in and what's the feeling? <laughs> You can start and I'll adjust. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was very crazy. Like obviously, it, I was just I couldn't really process it for like the first little bit. But I never like really thought that it wouldn't come out. Like I know like movies like horror movies who have like, a lot of VFX take time to edit and stuff like that, and also COVID. So. Um, yeah, it's been really cool. And like when uh, one of the other interviews came out, my PE teacher came up to me at recess. I didn't know that you were famous. And I was just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> yeah. Tassiana. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, at one point, I, I really did. I was losing a lot of um, hope when it came to uh, the movie actually coming out. And I really didn't want to, <laughs> I hate to say it. And I really didn't want to like keep bothering, you know, Nyla, like, you know, how's it going? How's it going? But um, uh, yeah, when I really, I when I heard the actual release date and saw the article and I saw like a rough draft of the finished movie, I was actually blown away. I was, I was it was really surreal to me to to watch the movie that I, that we had worked so hard to to put together for so long. It was just like honestly so amazing for me. It was worth the it was worth the two three year wait, and I just I'm really so excited for everybody to be watching this. That's awesome, and yeah, obviously this is not a knock towards Nala, but we know the pandemic was a very unpredictable time and there was a lot of filmmakers who were literally had no clue what was next where was the light at the end of the tunnel where would their film ultimately land and what did you know it lands at one of the biggest film festivals in the world so this is a huge win here now one thing I am and you know I don't want to expose my age here but I realized that a lot of the dialogue amongst the younger cast was very organic and totally makes me know that my dialogue is now dated. It's, it's a sad time for me, but I wanted to know uh, for you all, how much input did you have in the script or was Nala where you are some type of wizard and was able to really translate as to, you know, the, 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 the now the, this new generation of, of dialogue and lingo and so on. And Tasia, I want to start with you since you were the lead here. I want to, I, I want to know with that question. Um, well, personally, I, I didn't have a lot of influence on the dialogue of the movie. I had actually met Nyla and, and um, really started um, auditioning for the movie after I had after the film uh, script had been made. So um, on set, I didn't really change a lot of the lines. I, I talked to the um, Melissa, who was the, um, the acting coach. And I just asked her like, can I switch some of these words around to make it sound more me, like uh, switch around the sentences and, and really personalize the, the character that I was assigned to. But um, I, I personally didn't, I don't, um, didn't have a lot of influence on the script, but I do remember um, uh, some of my friends like Alexis, I, I, I know um, a lot of the, the, the characters and the, the personalities and the, the monologues were really like, both like inspired by her, but she also brought together a lot of ideas that would 
that uh, improved the uh, lingo and conversation to make it sound more natural in the movies. Alexis played Jessie in the movie. Yeah. And she and, yeah. and Alexis and um, Chelsea, they, uh, when Ryan Cavan, my co-writer on this, were and I were about doing um, development of the script and doing our initial writing, um, they were taking us around town to, and talking to us about boys and and what they were up to and and so it's just we're just like listening to everything and. And um, yeah, and so like certainly uh, when we were, and, and even then when we would start just kind of hanging out, there would just be certain social dynamics amongst the girls that you, you could just pick up on that are also very familiar. Like I, it's like teenage girls are kind of the same everywhere and, and we, and dealing with certain things. And, and so it was interesting to see how, um, how they were processing things that maybe I dealt with differently um and uh so so they uh certainly kind of influenced some of the dialogue there that's good that's good knowledge else unless you want to get in and add something I have a unique question for you um I stuck to the script pretty well I think too we didn't do a whole lot of improv for the movie but I did make it sound like I was saying it somehow. Like I just like put emphasis on different words to make it sound a bit more like me. So it sounds or makes sense in my head. But yeah, I just stuck to the script um, for most of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's some good writing here. <laughs> um, coming back to you really quick, because um, I'm, I'm coming up on time, but I really got to ask you about one of my favorite scenes of the film. And that's when you were sitting here holding the head and you were kind of playing decoy, uh, talking to yourself. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, setting up for, uh, uh, like I said, a plan for the alien. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, but talk me through that, holding a prosthetic head and whatnot. How, how was that? How was bringing that scene to life for you? Um, the head was so heavy after so many takes. And like, it was... It looked gross, even from the start, even after all like the VFX. Uh, no, 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 I don't, but it was so fun to like look at it and expect, like inspect it. It looked so cool and so real, Yeah. but it's just the screaming. Oh, that was so fun to do. I loved like talking to myself. I just love like acting for that scene. That's probably like one of my favorite scenes that I filmed. It was so awesome, so awesome. Um, so I know I'm coming up on time, but I just realized I need to ask another very important question. Pang, a very beautiful set location. I was just blown away. You all filmed on location, I read, uh, which, wow, I wish I could have just put a fly on the wall. This amazing scenery. Um, but I really love beyond that, that it feels like, and you, you talked a little bit about the culture and whatnot, and, and, and just, you know, going around that town. I love the idea that the, the characters in this film were strong women and it wasn't something that was beat over the head, no matter the age. All the women involved here was going out there to save the town. And it wasn't like a, the whole dynamics of like, oh, women are better or, or this, this and that and guys are whatever it may be. It was just the idea that we kick ass and we can go do this. Um, so for you all, all three of you all, what type of responsibility and privilege do you feel knowing that you have characters that are going to influence and inspire other uh, uh, other people that want to pursue this career, but just other people in society, period, knowing that, yes, it's an alien invasion, but nonetheless, the old idea was that you can go do it. Tassiana, I'll start with you. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm just... Like growing up um, as a little girl, I always I always watch these fun shows, you know, like iCarly and Victorious and, you know, um, these fun little Nickelodeon shows. And I always thought, oh, I wanted to, I really wanted to be like an actor or somebody like um, somebody in in Hollywood or with who had all of this um, like attention and luxury and and got to 
um, got to be in, in cool, in cool movies like that. But, um, I always thought like, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just a little girl who lives in like, you know, the completely isolated territory of Nunavut who probably has no future in pursuing my dreams, like, like, like as an actor, but, um, with, with this film opportunity, I really got to see the dynamic of living my dreams, but also living my life in Nunavut. And it was just like um, a complete, um, I don't know, uh, partnership, like complete um, dual, dual um, system of, of, of living my dreams of being an actor, but also being close to family and experiencing new things like um, being, being in, in paying with the beautiful mountains and scenery. And yeah, overall, I'm just so happy that I, I am an example. Me and the girls are examples of um, that you can, that you can live, live out your dreams, just like, just like how I, I doubted myself and I doubted the ability of, of, of being an actor in, in Nunavut and Inuk is an Inuk woman, especially it was, it was very difficult for me to believe that I could do something like this, but it, it's totally possible. And I'm so happy that I have a chance to inspire other people. Nala Jose. Um, yeah, I really think like one of the like important things here is like the main cast, they're all Inuit. And you don't really get to see like Inuit represented in the media in like a healthy way. And I think this is like an amazing opportunity for other children get to see themselves on the screen with everybody else. And, and like strong women too. Like, I just think it's such a cool movie. It's such a cool idea that Nyla got to make it come to life. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, again, I can't trust enough. This is a huge deal. You've made your world premiere at South by Southwest Film Festival, and this is just getting started. <laughs> and it's only going up here from, from, from this point on. Uh, but this is a fantastic film. Um, folks checking out this interview, totally check out Slashback. Um, it's, it's a lot of things I can say about it, but we're running out of time. But it's definitely, if you know me, you know it's my type of film. You're going to have a good time. And it gets crazy. <laughs> so for the three of you all, thank you so much for the time today uh, and, and have a good rest of your festival. Thanks so much. Thank you.